Welcome back to a brand new video of the Targeted Individual Program, Targeted Individual Experience. As I was about to hit the record button on the phone, the New York Credit Department again using their sirens. That's right, and as I said, New York were using their sirens and they used the call horn. Uh, listen, like I said, they, they can do whatever they want to do, right? But one thing I'm not going to do is as they keep doing this to us as TIs and they keep doing this to me is for me to become silent, right? For me to, to be quiet, right? If, if I don't stand up in the face of my oppression or the oppression of uh, my people or anybody else, then who am I as a person, right? Who am I as a human being, right? And again, when I say the word oppression, you know, people like to think that, oh, you know, oppression is like, you know, North Korea, right? Okay, now, again, the United States will say, oh, the North Korean government, they're oppressing their people. Really? When it's the U.S. and Western countries that have created sanction on the country of North Korea, right? So that way, they cannot trade or buy food, clothing, right? And they may be able to get uh, those things from countries that they are uh, allied with. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? So is the North Korean people uh, oppressed, right? And the United people in the United States are not oppressed. You look at black people. Are we not oppressed? You think because we can wear Gucci and we can wear, we can drive around in nice fancy cars, right? But look at the economic uh, warfare waged on us, right? That's a different form of oppression. Look at the educational warfare waged on us. That's a different kind of oppression, right? Look at our health disparities, right? Different kind of oppression. Look at the system as a whole and how violence is complete, continuously waged on black people. And because we think uh, we've been conditioned to look at violence as being something that's physical, right? We don't see the, the oppression in the psychological violence, they, they continue to do that, right? Okay, the lies, the the manipulation, those are all oppressive measures. Okay, the use of government agencies to de to deny, the use of the courts to. It, unfairly and unequally target black people that's a form of oppression okay they'll say yeah china's repressive russia's repressive but yet you can't even speak out against the fact that one of the united states allies has is being committing genocide right but you're free now. You're free. They will literally destroy your life because you speak out against the genocide of it by, committed by Israel against this Palestinian people. Right? But you're free. <laughs> okay? Yes, you are free. They will literally uh, destroy the lives of college, young college men and women, right? Because they're protesting against the genocide being committed by Israel, right? You have the billionaire class saying that we're going to make sure that these young lawyers, doctors, you know, entrepreneurs will never succeed, will never find employment, right? We are going to whitelist them. When I say whitelist, I don't mean in terms of it's something being positive, okay? 
whitelist is what they will call blacklisted but black people don't have the power or the ability to engage in denying people jobs benefit you know uh, health care all these things right economic resources so that's why i say whitelist but that's what it is right because the people that are doing those things are white people not black people okay yeah but you're free right you're free they will say to you go walk and go broke right meaning that if you believe in as, as far as how they define work is today if you believe in diversity equity inclusion right that you will as you see they they will attack you financially right but you're not you're not oppressed now you're not oppressed okay you're not oppressed right <laughs> i'm telling you man you know when i read that declassified document from the cia about the development of what they call psychotronic weapons and how these weapons can be used to subdue the minds of an entire population of people, an entire nation, right? To make them docile in their oppression, to make them content in their rights being taken away. Okay, and people will say, oh, you're crazy. These things don't, they, they don't have these weapons. Right? <laughs> That's what they say now. Even though it's clearly documented that the U.S. have been working on these weapons for decades, right? Now, we may not know all of uh, the extent in which, uh, how advanced they are, but I can tell you from my experiences with TI, they are advanced and the, this, these weapons are, have reached a level of maturity, right? To where we start to see now the effect of it. Right, we start to see within the younger generations today that we are becoming less intelligent, we are becoming less focused based on artificial things that are being done. It's not naturally occurring. Right? It is not naturally occurring. And how? what we have in our hands. Our cell phone, which has been so widely available for the past two decades. Right? Like I said, <laughs> I don't just say this to say things. I can give you, uh, I've given you guys the research paper that shows the biological and psychological effect, and as well as neurological effect of radio wave or microwave frequency and what it does on the human mind, all right? What it does to the human mind, okay? So yeah. And they will do whatever to try to shut you up. Why? Because they're afraid. They're afraid of the population waking up to understanding what it is that they've done and what they continue to do. You know, I was watching Reverend Barber Right, and he, there's a book he has, he just wrote out, and he says, uh, you know, and I've said this all the time too, poverty, a lot of people say this, poverty is manufactured. Poverty is deliberately perpetrated, right, on tens of millions of people in America. Okay, black people, 26% of our population are, is in poverty. Okay, compared to our numbers of, of what, 50, 50 something million? Look, near front of the apartment. Look, look, look. <laughs> look, look. Let me show you guys. All right, the ambulance, the course of threats. Look at the course of threats. The ambulance. And you got the, the Rasta guy. What you gonna do? Use the dreads? Huh? Yo, you show me, you infiltrated. You infiltrated the uh, 
the Rastafarian uh, community. Listen, we, we know you've been doing that for decades now. They say nothing new. All right, they say nothing new. But anyhow, as I was saying, so poverty manufactured. Yeah, and white Americans, 60, 67 million white Americans in poverty. But when they show poverty in television, they show black faces, particularly black women and black children. Right? You understand what I'm saying? So you got white people who are the majority of people who are in poverty believing that they're not in poverty and that black people are the ones who are in poverty. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm finally glad that you have a reverend who is saying that, you know, we're being lied to and we're being lied to on a level in which most people cannot comprehend. Right? Because too many of us, particularly black people, are too damn religious to know anything about truth because their religion is a, is a lie. Right? And they can never prove to me that it's not. But I can prove to them that it's a lie. But do they want to listen? No. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the next video.